we have here is uh, is the first test silicon for our fully integrated ray tracing power VR. So this is a mobile GPU. It's an equivalent GPU to a mid-range smartphone. Um, it's a Series 6 XT. It's um, it's based on the Wizard architecture. So um, uh, what we've done here, here here's the demo of it running. Um, and we've integrated ray tracing into the GPU. So in this demo, um, the ray tracing hardware is is modeling all the behaviors of light. So these this 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 reflection in the wood floor, the uh, all the shadows, the the lighting from the sky. That's all being calculated using ray tracing. This is a pure ray tracing demo, and this is running on the equivalent of a smartphone GPU. So you can see it's fully dynamic. It's rebuilding the hierarchy. Um, uh, every single frame, um, and this is just unprecedented performance for this 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 amount of silicon. Our ray tracing hardware up here, and um, our, uh, the open source cycles renderer with it um, running G, uh, uh, GPU compute acceleration down below. Now these workloads are roughly equivalent. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start start these up, start these rendering at the same time. And you can see, um, you know, here, here, this counter here is tracking how many passes or how many samples are being rendered. Here we see, um, you know, three sample, uh, three passes, four passes, you know, five passes now. Um, and, and with each pass, this noise goes away. It becomes um, up, up closer to the final image. In the time that we've now rendered seven passes, we, um, well, on the on the CUDA, the CUDA accelerated uh, GPU. We've rendered 47, 48, 49, 50, 52, 53. So, so 10 passes versus 57 passes. We're, we're, we're more than five times faster. But that's, that's only half the story. The GPU that we're running is a, is, is a mid-range smartphone GPU. And we're comparing that against a GTX 980 Ti. So a very high-end desktop GPU. Um, so what 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 that means is basically we've we've taken something that used to be they used to require a big a big desktop GPU and a lot of power and put it into a form factor that that that, that should be able to be run should be able to be integrated into you know headset devices or 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 you know tablets smartphones battery powered devices. Now we're not saying we're you know um, you know Nvidia is terrible. They're certainly not. What we're saying is that that's the power of taking of, of of having dedicated fixed function hardware instead of having instead of using GPU compute for this for this application. What I'm about to show you is the Unity 5 engine. We've worked with the Unity guys to add ray tracing for certain effects, um, and I'm about to show you those right now. Um, in this case, um, one one of the effects we've added in is is reflections. So. Uh, as you can see here, you can see the reflections in the windows and the puddle. In fact, I can come through and you can even see reflections uh, in reflections. Like, um, like you, you can see the tree, you see the puddle reflecting the window, reflecting the tree. That's using the ray tracing. But the entire scene is not using the ray tracing. So I can go ahead and flip off what the ray tracer is doing and what you let, you know. So you see, this is the standard GPU pipeline running all the raster shaders. And then the ray tracer is running the, ra the, the um, you know, you, you have the ray tracing integrated into that. So the shaders are the the, the GPU is 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 doing fine grained uh, f fine grained parallelism between between ray tracing workload and raster workload, um, all within the same application. So um, now I'm going to show you ray trace shadows. Um, let's go ahead and move the sun into a good good looking position. Um, and you can see that by using the ray tracer, we can we can make per pixel decisions about shadow softness. You see, nice nice accurate contact hardening. Well, I'm also I'm going to go ahead and um and show you. We we also have the traditional this game engine here is all, also has traditional shadow maps enabled as well. So I'm going to flip over to shadow maps. Now no one's going to not buy this game because the shadows look like this. Cascaded shadow maps are a perfectly good uh, technique for doing shadows, and a lot of games use them. But every cascaded shadow map implementation ha has has limitations. So I'll show you the, the the debug view. We can see the different cascade levels. You have more texel resolution in the red areas. Um, 
but you can still run out of texel resolution. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom into the shadow and find the point. You know, ba ba basically, you'll see the shadow. You'll basically see, come to the point where we run out of texel resolution and we lose all the shadow detail. And no matter how good your shadow map implementation is, there's always a point where you run out of shadow detail. Ray tracing shadows never run out of shadow detail. So here, you know, as close as close as I can get to these shadows, oh, one through the floor, I, I, I can. You all, you'll always keep keep full full shadow detail. But my favorite part about ray trace shadows is this: not only do you get better looking shadows, but it's actually less power and less memory traffic, less bandwidth required to, to evaluate these shadows using the ray tracer than it was to render all the cascade levels and sample the different, different um, cascades during shadow sampling.